the art of mixing is mostly to do about volume, right? And volume can be thought of not just whether I'm talking softer and I'm talking louder, but the relationship in volume between instrument A and instrument B, which has the focus, which is the accompaniment. Volume can be taught, thought of as, now, just tangentially, when we hear music in the real world, we are hearing music from a 360 degree perspective around our head, like a, like a sphere around our head, above and below and all around. When we are listening through speakers, but more specifically through headphones, which is how most people ingest music these days, either driving in their car, they listen to music, or they're listening with earbuds on, or they're listening to little speakers on their computers. Little speakers on the computers don't quite do it. Not a lot of people today have stereo systems in their house. If you live in an apartment, you know, somebody having a stereo system with a subwoofer could be your worst nightmare uh, if they're playing loud music that you hate at three in the morning. So most people listen on their to music on their phones with, with earbuds in. Well, the earbud is just two sound sources, right? Left and right ear. And, but we give the illusion of it being a three-dimensional space through volume. The volume of the sound in the left ear as opposed to the right ear, are they equal balanced, which makes it seem like it's coming in the center? Is the volume on the left louder than the volume on the right, which means makes it sound like it's over there? Is the volume on the right louder than the left, which makes it sound like it's over there? And how loud? Is there no volume coming out of your left ear, which makes everything sound like it's coming from over there? Is there no volume in your left ear, but all the volume in your right ear? I'm not sure I said the first part right, but I just corrected myself, which would make it sound like it's coming from over there. So... There's volume on that level. There's also the volume of the different frequencies in a particular sound. And when you're combining that together with another instrument, do those sounds work harmoniously or are they in opposition? Are they in concert or are they antagonistic towards each other? And do you have to do any corrective or additive uh, treatment to make things blend together? Do you have to increase or decrease the harmonics, the volume, the amplitude of the harmonics in a particular frequency register in order to make that sound blend with an, another instrument? There's also, um, so, so, so there's many, many, many levels of volume in mixing, right? And, uh, but the first basic thing to get to is understanding how to balance things out with volume. Now, we've done some of that work, and we'll do that's going to be a lot of what we do going forward because it's very important to creating finished product. That you, oh, I, oh there's another thing we haven't, I haven't taught you guys how to make MP3s yet. Uh, I'll cover, I'll, if I don't remember next week, somebody remind me and I'll open up one of our earlier projects and show you. Um, I don't want to get off topic today. Um, so any question on that so far, right? There's a, a lot of information there. So let me uh, close this out. Let's see. Now, let me show you something. I am going to... Uh, no, I don't have this set up. All right, so I'm going to hold down Command. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this session. 
right? And uh, make sure all my so everything's right, same size. I'm going to un uncheck that. I hit return. So I'm all the way at the beginning. You could see everything in the window. I'm going to close the session. So there's two ways of doing that. And some of you um, are doing this. You're closing this window and then closing Pro Tools or quitting Pro Tools or closing this, the session and leaving Pro Tools open. And then when I open it up the next time, it opens up like this, in which case I have to do Command and Equals to get that window to show up. What you want to do is have it look similar to this. And then if you use Option, I mean Command, Shift, and the letter W, it will close the session and keep Pro Tools open. So you don't have to boot Pro Tools up again. If you do Command and the letter Q, it quits Pro Tools completely. So Command, Shift, W, because I don't want to quit Pro Tools. So save changes, yes. And notice that session is not there anymore, but Pro Tools is still open. So, I'm going to be teaching you a few new skills right now. And um, one of the things that you're going to have to learn how to do is how to import audio into a session. And why is this important? This is important because over the last decade that I've been teaching this class, and especially since the uh, COVID pandemic, the way that most people are working right now is in their homes and sharing files with each other. And there's not as much, although things have opened up. Uh, I do think we're going to have another wave soon. Hopefully it won't be as bad or it won't be as um, devastating. But uh, the COVID's not over yet. But people are getting together. Things are more open. People are having live record recording sessions in studios. But you're going to typically, when you want to have somebody play on your session, you're going to want to send them something. They're going to play along to it, and they're going to send you something back. So you might be working in Pro Tools. You might be working in Logic. You might be working in GarageBand or Reaper or, or Studio One or Ableton or any DAW, and your colleague, your friend, might be working in a completely different DAW. It's not a problem. That that's that that's not an issue at all. You can, don't you don't need to have the same DAW to work in when you're just getting somebody to play on your session. If you're mixing something or collaborating with someone. It still can be worked around, but it's a little easier when you're working with the same program. But in this instance, you've written a piece of music and you want your friend to play saxophone. Well, you would need to make what's called a STEM mix to send them. And STEMS stands for Stereo Masters. And they would import the STEM mix into their DAW and they would play along and then they would make a final audio file of their playing that is the same length, and I'll, I'll, go over this, I'll go over this in a minute, as your stems, and they would just send you back that one audio file. You should be able to import it into your session, start it at the beginning of the session, and everything should line up. All right? So that's the end goal. So, But what we're going to do right now is we're going to learn how to Im import stems into or uh, into a, a new session, and we're going to do a basic mix for next week. So the first thing you need to know is the tempo. That's really important. So what I've got here is a folder, and you'll notice mix stems 80 beats per minute. So I've got the tempo written right into the folder name. And if you're going to collaborate with somebody, you need to let them know what the tempo is. And the best way to do it is to put it on the parent folder. Because then if you zip this up and send it to them, 
it's right there. So they'll know that it's at 80 beats a minute. Let me open this up and you'll see that it's filled with files. And you notice that every one of these files is the same size. Well, you know, this has 12.4 megabytes, but they're, they're all really basically the same size, right? 12 and a half megabytes. That's because they all start at the same spot and end at the same spot. There are no blank spaces between them. Let's see what, what this... Right? Hand clap. Guitar. This is a guitar case. This is a... Using that as like a conga almost. Blues heart. All right. So... Now, what is this? This is, uh, I scored a film for ESPN 2013, and it was called Pat XO, and it was about this woman named Pat Summit, who was the head coach of the Tennessee uh, uh, College, uh, Tennessee University basketball, the Lady Vols basketball team for decades. She's like one of the greatest college one of the greatest coaches ever. It doesn't matter whether she's a woman or a man. She's one of the greatest coaches ever. And um, ESPN did a documentary on her. And it was she had just been diagnosed with uh, early stage dementia, and she's since passed away. And we, the filmmakers decided that they wanted the music to sound really rootsy and raw and kind of almost lo-fi in a lot of spots. So I played everything in live and I, you know, got some percussion instruments. I, um, I bought crappy microphones that had a lo-fi sound to them because so, I was playing a lot of guitar on this, even though I'm not, you know, guitar is my second instrument um, after piano. And, but I did what I could as a concept to record the audio in a way to help achieve the goals of the score. So this is the main titles music. Um, yeah. And so you're going to mix it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to open uh, Pro Tools. We're going to do Command N, New Session. And you'll call this RSF uh, Stems mix and this is these aren't exactly these are these are stems but they're not stem there are other stems that people mostly think of these are the, the basic tracks but I'm just calling them stems for now because it's easier and then I'll put today's date and my initials which you'll replace with your initials and I'm going to create and I'm going to save this on my desktop you would save it in your folder that you've created Okay, so what we're going to want to do, the first thing we're going to want to do is we know that it's 80 beats per minute, so we'll make sure we're at measure one. And I'll click here, and I'm going to tap in 80 beats per minute. So we've got that all set up, right? We need to get that audio in here. And what I want to do is I want to get the audio in here into the audio files folder that's in the session folder. So what do I mean by that? Uh, give me one sec. So here's, here's my session folder for this. I want to get the audio from here and have Pro Tools, whoops, come back, put it into here for me, right? Right into this folder here. So that when you compress this, all the audio files will be in this folder, not in the second folder. And then anybody will be able to open it up. So that's I've gone over that before. And most of you are getting that. So we don't need to have a click in this session. So I'm going to right-click on the name click, and I'm going to hide and make inactive. We don't need to see it. 
And it's still there. It's right here in the tracks list. I need to import audio. So if I go, there's two ways you can do that. There's, there's several ways to do that. A lot of people just drag the audio files onto the timeline. I don't like to do that. I like to do it the old school way. So you go click here and you go to import audio or command shift I. So command shift and the letter I. Let me get that. Uh, I got. I want to open up that keystrokes. Oh, I put that in the dock. I must have put that in the dock. I did not. All right. Uh, I don't want to look for it. Okay. So Command Shift and the letter I brings up this dialog. Now, this is. I was working on something yesterday, and I had to import some audio. So what you want to do is, um, you want to navigate to your desktop. And you want to find your stems. And you want to click on the top one, hold the shift key down, and click on the bottom one. They all become highlighted. And what you want, you see how it says blue convert? Well, that's because I recorded these at a different sample rate than we're at right now. And I'm going to go over sample rates next week. But you want to e either copy or convert. You, It'll sometimes say add. You don't want to add. You don't want to add all. You want to copy or convert. Right here, this will say copy or convert depending upon the sample rate of your session versus the sample rate of the audio files. So you just want to make sure that you click either uh, copy or convert, not add. You do not want to click on add, even if it's blue. So I'm going to convert. They all go here. And I'm going to just do open. And then it will take you to choose a destination folder, audio files. It will typically, unless you've done something screwy, default to the audio files folder inside of your session folder. So just say open. Processing audio. This will take a certain amount of time depending upon how fast your system is. And then you'll get another dialog. Audio import options, right? New track. And the location for this should be at the session start. There are time, These are all important, but for this is the first time we're doing this session start so that all of these audio files will start at the beginning of the session. Then you click OK. And it will create all these tracks, and they're all highlighted so just option click on any of the names and it puts them in alphabetical order so the first thing you need to do is to organize your session okay and you organize your session by instrument and by color so i'm going to look around for my percussion instruments. So I've got claps. I've got two claps. So I'm going to highlight these both by holding the sh clicking on one, holding the shift key and clicking on that one. And I want my percussion instruments at the bottom. So I've got maraca, tambourine, and the guitar case. So you'll see that... Uh, let me just show, I'll show you. The, there's two of the guitar case. I'm going to drag them down here. And I actually can bring them all the way down to the bottom because they're the lowest pitched instruments. And then the claps are playing my backbeats, and I'll put them there. So now these are my percussion instruments down here. Let me get that in the middle and zoom in for you. Right? I'm going to make these all the same color. So I've got the, uh, so I've, Clicked on one, hold the shift key, and click on the top one. And then this, these are going to be all the same color. You can do whatever you want. 
And since these are audio files, if you want to make it this bright yellow or this bright green, which I don't recommend for MIDI, you can do that. I don't like that color, so I don't really do that myself. So I, I like more subdued colors uh, because I'm a sub dude. Anyway, uh, sorry, that was a bad joke. So I've made them, let's make them, there we go. All right. So those are all purple. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, harp. What is harp? Okay, so that's a blues harp that I'm playing. Um, I don't play very well, but I know about five or six riffs. And so that helps. So I, I want my melody up on the hot top. So I'm going to click and drag this up here. And then I'm going to color code this. I don't like that green. Maybe make it a little bit of a blue sound. Now, this is a little trick that I'm going to show you here. I've got guitar one, a static. Guitar one, cascade. Guitar one, KM184. Right? What is that? When I recorded this track, right, I had three microphones set up to capture my guitar performance. And I'll play each track, each one individually. Remember, I, want, I said I wanted to get, have a little bit of an edge to it. I wanted to capture that organically and not use plugins or effects afterwards. So I went on eBay, and an ecstatic microphone is from the 1950s, used typically on CB radios. Um, I still have it. I still own it down in the basement. Like these old school microphones. Let's see, which one did I use? The one I have looks like this, more like this. It wasn't $180 back then. <laughs> Got to be kidding me. Uh, I paid like $35 for it, and it's a garbage mic, but it, it, did, it did the job. So some of these are from the 1940s even. Oh, here it is. This is the exact, oh, 1970s? No, the one I have looks just like this, but it's from the 1950s. This is exactly like that. So... What's cool about that, when I was playing the harmonica through that, uh, I, I, could hold the, the, I could hold the harmonica in my hands, cup it like this, and have the microphone here so I could have the whole unit in one hand. All right, so let's take a listen to the uh, guitar. Uh, let's listen through the 184, which is uh, the most hi-fi of the microphones. So that's a, a, a Neumann small diaphragm condenser mic, and we're going to go over these things in a future class. You'll know that a little bit better. The Cascade is a, called a ribbon mic. It should have a, a mellower sound, less high frequencies, right? You can hear it's darker. This is the same performance. And then you can blend them together. Right? And then... The ecstatic is the cheap mic. Right, it sounds lo fi. So I could choose to use, I left them set up throughout the whole session, the whole, the whole score. I just left them set up. Uh, because I did, played a lot of guitar. And I could use them as I wanted to. So what we need to do is go through here and group guitar one, guitar two, and color those. So uh, guitar one, these three, and I'll color code those. What is this here?
Okay, so... Right, so this is... Um, okay, so I'm going to... Re see, I have to rearrange these by the wave forms, right? This says guitar two duplicated, but it it's a little different than this. So I might have to do some cleanup on this, right? And so guitar two cascade. Okay, so we want to make sure that everything is exactly the same. So we've got a static cascade and KM. So guitar two, like that. So I've got the static, the cascade, which is the ribbon mic and the 184, and then guitar two duplicated, right? Static, cascade, and 184. And then I've got maraca, tambourine. Okay, so this is basically now ordered. Let's uh, color code these better. So these three need to be a color, and I'll just make that maybe. That's not offensive. And then these three need to be the same color. All right, so this has now been organized. So let's, whoops. And you can see it's just, it's, uh, I've got this, the color of this is too much, too close to the color on the bottom. So let me change that. Hmm. There we go. All right, so that's color-coded, and these two are too close to the melody guitar. All right, so there you go, right? Color-coded and organized. So now what we want to do is get familiar with what every instrument is playing. All right, so we heard what the guitars are playing, this one here. We, we, we're familiar with that. This is the... What about this one here? So that's playing the same line as the, the red one, except it's with a slide guitar, right? So it's a different guitar. Uh, this is a Martin guitar, and this is my resonator guitar. And then what is this doing here? Interesting. So that's uh, just a little fill. And then the maracas, what are they doing? Just playing, you know, eighth notes with a quarter note pulse. One, two, three, four. One, two, two. Oh, it's playing sixteenth notes, right? And then the claps are on. And two, and on the ands. And then the guitar case, one. So you see, this is interesting too. So this is a muted sound. And I played the same thing harder. And that gives me a different sound. So, all right. So before I do anything else, I need to do some volume balancing. You can see that certain instruments are way too loud. And I want to play everything all at once. Uh, and this might be loud, so watch your ears, all right? Now, if I look right here, you could see I'm up in the red as I play that. Not good. All right. So we're going to have to fix that. So we're going to select all these tracks. I'm going to click on the top one. I'm going to hold the shift key down and just cycle all the way through. Oh, before I do that, let me just show you something. You'll notice at the lower left of every one of these clip audio clips is a little fader with 0 dB. This is called clip-based gain, and you can bring this down and up to change the volume before it goes through the, uh, through the channel strip. And I'm going to go over signal flow with you in, an, in a future class as well. So what we want to do is we want to, we could turn the volume down here, but when you're first mixing your gain staging, I prefer to bring it down on the clip. So we're going to bring all the clips down evenly. 
So I'm going to click here and just hold the shift key down and go all the way through so that they're all selected. Or I could just, you know, scroll down like that. So if I hold the control key and the shift key and press, let me zoom in on this first of all. Whoops. It's out of control. <laughs> okay, let me scroll in. So I'm holding the control key and the shift key, and I'm going to push the downward facing arrow on our com computer keyboard. You notice that it goes down in 5 dB increments. And I'm going to bring this down to about minus 8 or 9 because it's very loud. Or maybe let's start off at minus 10. And now if I play it from that middle section again, it's not distorting, but it's still, a, the aggregate volume is too loud. So I made a mistake and I recorded everything too hot. Right? But we're going to leave it right there for now because we may do some mixing that's going to fix that up. Okay? Now the other thing too is that you notice that some of these... are much louder than the one other other ones in the same group. So these, I want to balance these, so I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to do this by eye so that they, they, they match a little bit and then maybe bring these up a little bit, right? And then the same with this. So Control-Shift and the Downward, and then maybe this will be up a little louder. So that now our... That's a little bit more balanced. Okay. So I'm listening, and the harmonica's playing the melody. It's a little soft, so I'm going to bring that up. So before we continue on, let's just review. I set up the tempo. The tempo was written in the name of the stems or the basic tracks. I imported the audio, right? Command shift, the letter I. I either copied or converted the audio. I did not add audio to the session. Copy or convert, whichever one of those options is there. Because if we look here... All of those files have been copied into this audio files folder, which means that when you send this anywhere, it'll all be a nice compact package. All right. Then the instruments, you want to add them to a track at the session start. You'll get a prompt for that. Then when they get into the session, they're typically in alphabetical order. You want to organize them by the instrument. You, you want to color code them, and you want to get them so that they have a logical order. So for a track like this, I like to have my rhythm section down at the bottom with the lowest pitch instruments at the very bottom, and then the melody at the top, and then the other stuff in between. Now... One thing, though, is that these are little melodic phrases, so I want to put them at the top also. So I, let me show you how you can move all three tracks up at once. Let me get this in the middle. And let me zoom in. So I click here, hold the Shift key down, and click at the bottom one, and I can just drag all three up right below the harp. And you'll notice that there's an amber line over here. It lets you know that you're moving stuff, and there it just gets slotted in there hit Option and click on those names. And then th that melodic stuff is up at the top. Then the next thing we did, once we did all that organizing, is we took a listen and we looked at our meter. And we want to make sure that it is not um, 
going into the red. We really wanted to have, the, and I'm going to show you, uh, you know, once we get the basic thing down, because we're going to be working on this for a couple of weeks. Um, there's a way where you can, uh, I'll show you how to use a meter to do an exact number. But you basically want to, uh, in, in, inside of Pro Tools, but with the meter that's on the edit window or the arrange page, you want to basically have the loudest bits being about 80% of the way up or three quarters of the way up to the top of that, which we have now. Then I did a quick look visually at some of those other waveforms and in the groups of instruments, right, the ones that have the same performance with different microphones, I balanced those out by using my eye and I, I brought down that clip gain. So to get, well, but before that, I brought the clip gain down of everything, right? And I did that by selecting everything and using control, shift, and the downward facing arrow and it goes every time you click on the downward facing arrow, it goes down in point half a dB. So I went down to about minus 10 dB as my starting point. And so you should also. And then now the next thing I did was I eyeballed some of these other sounds that were in a group, but they the microphone was recorded too loud. And I even those out also using clip gain. So what we want to do is get familiar with the parts. And let's start with our drums. So I'm going to solo, which is clicking right here. And let me make these tracks bigger. The guitar case. So that's the top end. That's the bottom end. So maybe I'll change the position of that. Uh, let me drag this one up here. Okay, I want to have a little bit more low end in that. So I'm going to bring the volume of this up a little bit. See how it fills it out? No. In. That's good. Now, for this type of a track, we're going to leave the low pitched stuff in the center, right? We're talking stereo left and right. So that's the first thing to remember is that the low pitch stuff, we're going to keep the guitar case right in the center. And we've got a pan control right here. And the reason I picked this is that these are all mono tracks, so it's easier to get the panning thing together. All right, so we've got claps. Let's take a listen to these. Right, so they, not perfect timing, but they're a little soft, so I'm going to bring them up a little bit over in the clip gain. So control, shift, and the upward arrow, maybe 2 dB. So it's a little bit louder, but not too loud. Oops, and we'll solo those four and listen to them all together. Okay, so this is still covering up the claps a little, so I'm just going to use the fader and bring this down just a little bit more. Great. So the claps can stay in the center, but I might want to just move one of them a little bit to the left, like minus 10 or 15 to the left, and the other one 10 or 15 to the right. So you see I just clicked and dragged like that. So that's minus 18. It's 18 to the left, 16 to the right. It doesn't have to be this. That That's fine. Now, I could exaggerate that. Right? You hear the claps if you're wearing headphones. One is in your left ear and one is in your right ear. I don't like that because that takes away... I want that to sound with the center, uh, the, the hit on the guitar case. Right? And if it's too far to the center, it just takes up too much space. If it's too far left and right, it takes up too much space. So I'm going to move this just a little bit to the left to give it a little bit of width, but not too much. And then this one a little bit to the right. Oh, wait. That's the tambourine. So this is a little bit to the left. And 
and then this one is a little bit to the right. Just gives it a little width. Okay, so let's solo those four again. One, two, three, four. Now, looking at the maraca and the tambourine, they're playing complementary parts, but you'll notice that the tambourine has a greater amplitude. You could see that the distance from the bottom to the top is bigger than it is here. So let's add the tambourine. Now this I could pan a little bit more to the left or the right. Uh, maybe I'll pan this a little bit more to the right than the other instrument. And this a little bit more to the left than the clap. But let's listen to that now. And you'll see that as you pan the instrument, you can turn the volume of it down a little bit more. When it's in the center, it's fighting for attention with the kick drum and the, you know, the, the, the whole guitar case, percussion thing. So you could turn the volume down and still hear it. Let's add the maraca. And that's still a little too loud, too. And that's a nice groove we've got right now, right? Everything's balanced, and we got nice panning. It's a little wide. You know, I don't like to pan drums super wide all the time because I find that it loses the power. I like to have my drums be, all my percussion and drums be nice and um, compact. Definitely have a stereo spread to them, but not a huge stereo spread. Because if like a half of, if, a, if they're playing complementary rhythms and part of the rhythm is coming out of the left ear and the other part is coming out of your right ear, they don't sound con congruent, congruent. You know, they sound disparate and separate, not part of a what's driving the track. So that's just my own personal take on that. Somebody might dispute that, but it seems to have worked pretty well so far. So to me, that sounds pretty good. All right. Okay, so now we've got guitar to... So let me solo guitar too. Okay, so that's... That's fine, but I think guitar one, I'm going to move this so that it's down by the drums because guitar one is playing more of the um, driving rhythm. Right? So let's select these three and then drag these down so that they're right above the drums. And let me take a listen to these. And I'm going to, uh, you can do one of two things. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can use all three mics. You can use one of the mics. You can use two of the mics. You're mixing this. It's your choice, right? So if you don't want to use, let's say you only want to use the ribbon mic, right? What you would do is right click on the mic that you don't want to use and hide and make inactive just like that and then it disappears but it's over here in the clip list and you can see that um hold on one sec let me zoom out um it's in the clip list and you'll see that it's uh, italicized and this dot is not here right but if i click here it's back and it's gray and it's tilicized. That means it's inactive. To make it active again, you just right click and make active. So you could, you know, do whatever you want in terms of the numbers of guitars that you want to have for each part. You could have one, you could have two, you could have three. That's your choice. Make an aesthetic choice. All right. Okay, so let me listen to the three of these together. I'm going to use all three and I'm going to blend the three of them together. So now what I'm going to do here is I am going to make a choice. Let's listen to the ecstatic first. I'm going to turn that up because I think I want that to be the... 
the basis of the sound and then wrap the other two microphones around it. Right, you see, that's too loud, right? And I'm using the clip bass gain to adjust the volume here. So that's the static, and when I add the cascade in, you're gonna hear fullness. One more time, a static. Cascade. You can hear it's fuller, all right? And then the other microphone is more hi-fi. So I, I just want to add maybe a little bit of that hi-fi in there. Right, so you can hear that's way too much, and I'm going to back it off. Yeah, and when you mute it, it you can see that it disappears. So let's listen to... Um, now, let me make this smaller so that I can see it. <laughs> so I'm going to solo these guys. And, and there's a quick, easier way to do what I'm doing right here. But let's just, this is a lot all at once. And I'm going to listen to the balance of this. Okay, what instrument is too loud? Anybody want to venture a guess that uh, one, one, one clap. part? What? Clap. Correct. Clap is too loud. So now I've got, you know, I've, I like the clip gain. It's fine. I'm going to, this time, I'm going to just bring the volume of it down here using this fader. So I've got options, right? So I'm going to bring that down maybe 3 dB on both of them. There you go. So you can hear everything, right? Now, if, if, it, if it sounded something like this, right, you can tell the guitar is way too loud now. So you just, you know, you, you listen to the balance and how it, the two instruments fit in together. Now, the next thing is that I've got two guitars here that do something complementary. Guitar one and guitar two. So those, I'm going to, spread I'm going to spread them apart one is going to be pretty far left and the other one is going to be pretty far right right so it'll be just like our country half of it's far right and half of it's far left anyway um so uh let's do this here so 100 is all the way over with audio right so let's go about 70 percent of the way there And then now you should hear, right? That guitar is in your left ear right now. Now, once you've moved it out from the center, it might be too loud because it's not fighting for space with everything that's in the center. So you could also bring the volume of that down. But we'll just leave it there for now. And I'm just making a note of that in my head as I go along that I might have to bring the volume of that down. So now let's listen to guitar two. So I'm just listening to the combinations. So I'm making a choice here. I don't want to use the ecstatic on guitar two. So I don't like the way that sounds. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to hide and make that inactive. And I'm just going to use these two microphones. So now let me listen. So I've got guitar one to the left. I'm going to take guitar two and make the same distance but to the right so about 70 percent right so 68 65 that's clo very close and i'll listen to the both guitars together
And you can hear the guitar one is, uh, is the, the red one is too loud. Can you all hear that right now? So I'll just bring the volume of it down a few, like two or three dB on the fader here. Uh, that went a little too much. All right, so I'm using the clip gain and the faders. So I'm making a note that the guitars might still be just a little bit too loud. So this is something that's important, right? If rather than bringing all the drums up, because I think the drums are too soft, I might bring the guitars down a little bit. Remember, if you can't hear something, it's not always best to bring the volume of it up. What what else is it is playing there? What's the overall volume, right? These are things to consider. Okay. So, now this here, we got this right here. I actually like the way that sounds the way it is. I might... Let me just hear with the ecstatic, if I turn the ecstatic up a little bit more. Yeah, that's cool because that almost sounds like distorted a little bit. And maybe, um, actually, the cascade to add a little fullness. And maybe on this one, I'm not going to have the hi-fi of the 80, 84, so I'll make that inactive and hide it. Okay, so that's a melodic figure, so I'm going to leave that in the center. And then I've the last thing is I could start listening to everything and seeing how the harmonica balances in with everything now. Okay, so this is too loud, right? So I'm just going to bring the volume on that down over here. So this red guitar is too loud still, so I'm going to bring that down another couple of dB, right? Okay, so that's a good start, right? Oh, let's just do this. So uh, this is this is as far as I want you to do for next week. And then when you finish, hit the return key, control option A, and make sure that none of these are selected like this. You hit the option key, save that, and then you're out. You can quit or that. So this is as far as I want you to get to next week, right? Um, do you want me to write that up onto a PDF? Or you think that you'll um, you'll you'll remember that. So basically, you open a session, 80 beats per minute. Import the audio. Make sure that you either copy or convert. Organize your tracks. 
Okay, I'll I'll send an email. Right. Okay, great. I'll send. Uh, yeah. I'll when I get up tomorrow. I'll I'll write an email and uh, when, maybe not when I get up, but tomorrow I'll write an email and put it in an email, uh, a PDF, or write it out to the email. But basically, what you're going to do is um, just get this started, and you're just going to work on panning, volume, organization, color coding. Right. That's all we done. And there's no there's no reverb added. There's no EQ added. I and they'll, I can tweak things a little bit more. But basically, it you can hear everything right now. It's very clear. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find the. Uh... Give me one second. If I could find the video for this. So this is the full mix, right? a silly little tune but it, 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 the score worked out really well actually it's one of my f it's funny because i typically write orchestral music although i i and jazz based music but i do love roots music and i have so i have more fun creating this score than any other of the other hundred films i've scored uh, much much more fun doing this uh it was a lot it was you know i, I recorded it in my apartment um uh, in, on the Upper West Side when I was living on, on West End Avenue. Which microphone was that, Casey? The static microphone? Yeah, is it the one that you got off eBay? The, yeah, yeah, the, the, the really cheap one. one? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it sounds awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I still have it. It's I, it downstairs. I had I bought two of them, and one of them no longer works, and I, I have to bring it somewhere to get fixed. But I, I, I probably spend more to fix it than I actually spent to buy it. So, you know, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I, I typically, it's interesting. There's this whole thing in music technology um, that old things sound better. If you look at the price, uh, like, for example, an electric guitar, a 1959 Gibson Les Paul guitar, depending upon they only made a few hundred of them, right? And depending upon who owned it, it could fetch well over a million dollars on eBay for a guitar that was made in 1959, right? And I have no doubt that there's magic in that old wood, but we live in a golden age for uh, guitars, guitar amplifiers, effects pedals, microphones, microphone preamps, effects processors, a golden age where you've got people that are making recreations of these old designs and they sound incredible and they need much less maintenance, right? So, um, you know, right here, uh, this, this, this instrument here, that's a, a mini Moog made by Moog, uh, music and they were first introduced in the early 70s and if I were and I am high when I was in high school we had one and I've got this uh, funny story that my high school music teacher uh, was very forward thinking and he took a piano practice room and he turned it into a 
a little project studio, and he put a mini Moog, something called a Moog Sonic 6, a four-track tape recorder, a piano, and a spring reverb unit. And we were allowed to sign out time and go in there and just fool around. And when he used to he used to live about five or six miles from my high school, and he'd ride his bicycle, you know, like one of those big tired knobby bicycles with the with the flat um, handlebars that curve up, and he had a basket on the front, and he used to take the mini mug home on his bicycle. He used to ride home with this thing, and it's not light; it's heavy. Uh, but I, they came out with a recreation, and I purchased the recreation about four or five years ago, and I'd much rather have that than one of the vintage ones because even though the vintage ones are iconic, they're on some of the biggest selling records of all time, like the Michael Jackson Thriller album. It's playing all the, all the bass on that, on many of big hit songs, uh, even today. Like, it, it's out. It needs to be adjusted. It needs to be serviced. The parts are 55 years old, 50 years old, uh, the, the components, they are, you know, out of, they just, you know, it's just the maintenance thing alone is, um, is, is, is a headache. So whilst vintage stuff is cool and having those old microphones is cool, I'd rather have, um, I'd rather have new stuff that I purchase that, uh, or something that's relatively new. Like I've purchased used guitars, you know, um, the only caveat, though, is with acoustic guitars. Acoustic guitars age. And acoustic guitars and like acoustic violin, like a violin, a viola, cello, the wood changes as time passes. And if you're playing it a lot, the vibrations of the music you're playing actually change the way the guitar sounds. So I have a guitar that I purchased new, uh, a Martin acoustic guitar in 1997, so 25 years ago, it sounds much better today. The sound has opened up, um, and it sounds much better today. And so that's the only caveat. You know, I've got a couple of other guitars from the 90s, and they're they're but they're all acoustic guitars. So I'm talking about electronic instruments. You know, um, yeah, electronic instruments. The other thing too is if you buy a a, a very expensive old instrument, you, you can't bring it to a gig. Somebody will steal it from you. You'll have to keep it on the lock and key from your house, uh, you know, really, seriously. So, all right. Anyway, that brings us to the end of today. So you'll do get as far as you can. We're going to work on this for two weeks because there'll be more stuff to do next week. I'll introduce some other techniques. And, um, yeah, so we're moving right along, right? We have did all that with MIDI, which was difficult for some of you. This should be a lot easier. There's no... Um, there's no playing or performing. This is just settling, setting up the volumes, organization, and the importing of the tracks, all right? And I'll get this review video up a as soon as possible if you need to look at it again. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put chapters for the first half about the waveforms and then the second half where this starts so you can easily navigate to the beginning of this if you need to go through the review again. So with that, Thank you, everyone. Um, I will send you a PDF with the assignments, and we will continue on. Unless there are any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I'll catch you guys next week. Have a great Thank weekend, you. week and weekend, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Professor. Yep.